Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Sorry I haven't posted in a little bit. I've been out of town, and as a result, I've been slacking a little bit. As you can see though, I'm filming at night, hence the serial killer lights on the back of my apartment. And as a result, I want to get this over with. So let's go ahead and get into things. All right, so today we're going to be talking about content delivery networks, or CDNs. So what is the premise behind these? Well, basically in a lot of modern web applications or even mobile applications, we want to be serving static content. Now what I mean when I say static content is any type of file where it's basically written once and then you're never modifying it again. So that might be something like music, some video footage, a photo, or even possibly HTML files because that also needs to get sped up. So much like my nether regions, these files are extremely large. And as a result, it is very important to us and very useful to us to be able to speed up how quickly they load. It is very crucial for the user experience. So let's go ahead and quickly give ourselves a little reminder about what caching does for all of us, even though I've said this the last few videos, you never know who's watching which. So caching, especially in the distributed setting, is going to allow us to get great speed ups in terms of our application performance, both in reads and writes, in the case of CDNs, mostly going to be reads, but this is possible through faster data storage. A lot of caches will store things in memory, not necessarily the case for CDNs just because they're big files, but what is definitely the case for CDNs is closer data storage. We're going to be distributing our caches geographically, and as a result, I can be physically closer to the CDN that's going to be serving me content. Caches, of course, though, do have downsides to them. They're not just perfect, mainly in the sense that, of course, the more components that we add to our system, the more complexity we have. We have to keep track of where everything is located in terms of the files. There will be more downtime of all of our CDN nodes. And of course, cache misses are slow. If I try to read from a CDN and the content's not there, it would have just been faster to go straight to the database wherever I was storing that static content originally. So the main kind of you know, distinguishing factor of a CDN is this part right here. It is a geographically distributed cache that is used specifically for static content. So it's basically a subset of a distributed cache. So as you can see below, I've got my terrible drawing of the USA and Canada because I don't even know what Canada is shaped like and frankly I was too lazy to look it up. But the point here is that geographic sharding is going to allow us to do the following. If we have the USA over here, this is New York, this is you know, let's say San Francisco, Chicago, and then we've got Canada, maybe Toronto and Vancouver. The point is, is that different people in different places are likely going to be viewing different content. Let's imagine that I went ahead and started a magazine such as the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. The people in New York and San Francisco might have a preference for the American American ladies in the magazine, but the people in Canada, the dirty Canadians, might like the Canadian girls. And as a result, we would want to cache different images in their CDN nodes. So hopefully that makes sense. This gives us a little bit of extra flexibility, allows us to make the most usage of our space. So another important distinction with CDNs is the concept of pushing versus pulling. So using our Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition example once again, we have our magazine on the left here, and this would be an example of a push CDN, where let's say we know that every single month, or maybe every day even, we're going to be uploading some new content, and that's going to be the majority of what users are looking at. In that case, we can preemptively populate our CDN. So it's October 2023 when I'm filming this video. So what I could do if I were film or creating you know, the Sports Illustrated magazine is I could take the images of that month's edition and pre-populate them into the CDN such that when I ask for bikini pics, they're already in there. And the CDN says, this is good to go. I already have your back covered. Now, of course, if I were to look for an older picture, I'd be out of luck. But we do know in this case that the majority of the time I'm going to be looking at the most recent photos. Now that works really, really well when we have the type of content that we know is going to be accessed in advance. However, sometimes it is less obvious. And so the example I'll be using on the right is OnlyFans. OnlyFans has a lot of creators and it's probably impossible for the OnlyFans you know, platform or admins to know in advance which content is going to be most popular. So in this case, we can use a poll based approach and that's gonna look something like this. We've got someone over here and they're gonna say feet pics. Obviously, I've been selling a lot of those on OnlyFans recently, they've been blowing up, so this is pretty realistic. The CDN at this point, maybe I just posted them, so it's gonna say, no, I don't actually have these. It's then going to have to proxy itself to the server and say, do you have feed picks? 
And keep in mind, this is actually not the worst thing. A nice thing about CDNs is because they are using, you know, basically data center level hardware, the network switches they have are faster and that connection between the CDN and the actual application server could potentially even be faster even though there is technically kind of like a man in the middle dynamic. So once we go ahead and, you know, connect to our server, the server is going to say, okay, well, obviously I have these. I'm the source of truth. CDN, you can go populate yourself. So now the CDN has these pictures over here. It's going to return them to the user and store them such that when another user comes along and asks for the same one, the CDN already has those pictures and comes back. So of course, the poll-based system is very good when you don't know in advance what content is going to be most popular. Other places where this is going to be useful are places like TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, anything like that where you just don't know in advance because there's such a wealthy amount of content. So of course, the one downside of a poll-based CDN is that we're going to have a cache miss. This is kind of inevitable, but again, it is going to slow things down. Okay, so let's quickly conclude our CDNs here so I can go to bed. But basically, like I mentioned, the defining factor of a CDN is that geographic distribution and the fact that generally speaking, we're using it to serve static content. So this has a bunch of pros and a couple of cons as well. Of course, it is going like any other cache to reduce the load on our actual application servers. If every single one of us tried to reach out to a server for the image or file that we were looking for, that would be extra load that could be used for certain other requests. Since so many of these are gonna be duplicated, we're better off just caching that content. Of course, in addition, this is going to be faster. This is kind of where the geographic part comes in. At least as far as I'm aware, not all CDNs are necessarily going to be storing stuff in memory because these files can potentially be big and as a result, you wouldn't be able to store as many of them because you're just gonna have less memory. So a good chunk of these might actually still be storing things on disk, but if they're much closer to the user, you're still gonna get a nice performance improvement. Another thing is that we can actually have different stuff in every single cache, split by location. Maybe if you have many images, you can split it by resolution, uh, audio, bit rate, anything along those lines. You know, we can actually vary the content there, which is super nice, do some pre-processing on it. Of course, we do have added complexity. Um, you know, I now have to keep track of the fact that I have all of these extra nodes. They can go down. What am I gonna do as far as a coordination service goes? Do I know which nodes are actually mine, which are up, which are down? And of course, cache misses, especially in a pull-based CDN, are going to be expensive. In a push-based CDN, you'll have cache misses when you try to access content that you know the site admins didn't think would be there. So, for example, you know if I want to access uh, August 2023 photos when October is the most recent edition of my Sports Illustrated magazine, I'm probably going to get a cache miss, and that's going to be a bit slower. So CDNs, keep in mind, are typically something you want to be outsourcing because otherwise you'd have to set up all these nodes in all these different places. Feel free to look at the docs for things like Akamai and Cloudflare. And then of course, in terms of what we're on to next, I want you guys to start thinking about, well, you know, of course, CDNs are a cache, and as a result, you can't always store all of your data, your static content in those caches. So if they're not in the cache, where would we actually be storing them? Because in truth, a typical database like we've discussed in the past is not necessarily the best answer. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative, and I will see you in the next one.